Hi. Hello. Hello, Tomoko. everyone. Hi, Tomoko-san. Hi. Welcome. <laughs> Konnichiwa. Okay. Konnichiwa, minasama. Yoko-san. Yoko-san. Oh, okay. <laughs> Hi, Albert. Konnichiwa. How's been? Konnichiwa. <laughs> Hello. Good, good. Okay, well, people are still being admitted. Um, let's just wait for 30 seconds more, <laughs> and then I can start. Lian, I've been talking to uh, Professor Shao about the conference, the Chinese conference on uh, Acrophotomic this year. Uh -huh. so. Yes, uh, Professor Zhang and Professor Shao have discussed this topic. Uh, I think they they may have some um, some ideas uh, about okay. the Ecophotomix conference. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Because next year is international, so mm -hmm. we want to have you before that. Okay. Okay. Well, let's let them start for today. Welcome everyone to our June uh, webinar. Uh, very pleased to see you all today. Uh, today, our guest is um, uh, Associate Pro Pro Professor Lian Li, uh, who is working at the School of Pharmaceutical Sciences at Shantong University in China. And uh, he's a part of the um, group of Professor Zhang. And they actually, for a, quite a long time, are practicing now atomics, and they have really, really nice results, especially. Uh, when it comes to applying aquaphotomics to study macromolecules. And unfortunately, I, I wanted to find uh, a link to give now to all the people, but I would uh, really like to recommend, Lian is uh, an author of a recent review paper on uh, proteins. And uh, that uh, for me, it was one of the really best reviews that I read recently and uh, during the webinar I will find the link again and, and share it. Lots of interesting information and uh, some of this information Lian is going to share with us today. So during the webinar uh, please uh, type, your, um, type your messages uh, or if you have comments on the lecture or if you have questions you can put it in the chat box. And of course, you can always um, afterwards join the discussion, raise your hand and uh, ask a question in, in real time, and then Liam will answer. The lecture will be uh, around 40 minutes, then afterwards we have some time for discussion. And of course, as always, uh, the, the webinar is being recorded and in a few days will be available on YouTube with Japanese subtitles. So whoever had maybe trouble following the lecture, in English can also uh, benefit from viewing that. Of course, uh, not, not only Japanese, you can actually um, choose any subtitle that, that, that you wish. Uh, with this, I would just like for, uh, for a second to ask Professor Tsenko, do you have something to add? Would you like to add something to address? The no, people? just welcome uh, uh, Liam and thank, thank you, you for to accept our invitation and um, to everybody to uh, for participation in in this uh, web, our webinar um he this webinar will be a beautiful example about water being a probe and a mirror a, a mirror so through the water we learn about proteins through single molecules and and uh, and this is really really a beauty and i i'm, I'm sure you'll enjoy it thank you so we are really now going into the aquaphotomics. This is web this webinar is totally aquaphotomics. So uh, Lian, thank you once again for uh, accepting to to give us this lecture. And if you're ready, you can begin. Can you please share your uh, screen with us? Okay, I will share the screen. Okay, uh, first, I, I still thank Professor Signor and uh, Elena for inviting me to have uh, share our recent work about aquaphotomics. Uh, today, my topic is application of aquaphotomics in understanding the behavior of micromolecules. Uh, recently, we have done some research about the micromolecules and uh, I will introduce uh, my work in the following four parts. 
first, I will introduce some um, background about uh, the equiphotomics. Then I will give two applications. One is using equiphotomics for protein analysis, and the other one is for the carbohydrate analysis. Uh, finally, I will give some a message uh, about equiphotomics. Okay, first uh, is the introduction part. As we all know, micromolecules play a key role in our daily life, and uh, there are three main kinds: uh, proteins, carbohydrates, and the lipids. Uh, they also are very important materials during the pharmaceutical manufacturing, and uh, there are a lot of methods to characterize their probability uh, properties. Uh, such as, for example, each, if we want to know the composition of the protein or carbohydrates, uh, then uh, HPLC or chromatography methods could be used to get the information of the composition. Uh, on the other hand, if we want to know the molecule weight, we could use the mass spectroscopy. These methods are very uh, practical and have very uh, precise results. Uh, however, they have some limitations. Uh, the most one is that they cannot uh, realize the online analysis or real-time analysis. So uh, real-time analysis is very important. And vibrational spectroscopy provide a powerful tool for probing the micromolecules. Uh, for example, uh, on the Uh, on the left, we could use uh, ATR, ATR LR to characterize the, the plant cell walls composition, especially the composition of the carbohydrates. And uh, the other one is NIR. NIR could be used to uh, characterize the properties of the uh, micromolecules. And uh, usually, uh, the micromolecules is in the uh, equal status. So, we have to get the RF spectra as shown on the computer. Uh, the, from the uh, NR spectra, we could find two wide bands and the over two and the combination bands. And it is difficult for us to get uh, some useful information. Usually, there are two strategies facing this situation. The first one is that we use different pretrained methods to separate or eliminate the background information. Then we could get the target information and uh, a lot of chemometrics uh, experts developed a lot of uh, pretreat methods. And uh, the other strategy is to, I think we could use this background information and uh, use this background information to reflect the interaction between the water and the micromolecules, that is, uh, Professor Anson uh, pro proposed the concept of aquaphotomics. So water could be used as a proof to elucidate the uh, mechanics. So why water? Uh, I think there are some reasons we use water as proof. First, it, it is very common. It is uh, most uh, common, it is uh, covered by the, our planet also. Over 70% of our body is composed uh, with water. So it, and uh, it should not be labeled with any other things. So it, it has uh, the advantage of non label. Also, uh, it has a lot of structures, such as when the water molecules in different uh, circuits, tense, the hydrogen bond in the network is different. Uh, it is very sensitive to the irons, so it has uh, the advantage of high sensitivity. Also, it could be used for real-time analysis. Therefore, I think water could be used as a probe to discover some mechanisms of the micromolecules. And uh, equiphotomics was used um, to find the mechanisms. Uh, usually, we prepared a solution of the micromolecular uh, solutions and uh, perturbations were used. 
such as different pressure, uh, different uh, temperature, or different concentration were used to get a block of data. And multi variate analysis method were used to help us find some wall marks. And this could be helpless to visualize the interaction within the solutions. So in the following part, I will introduce you some examples that we use water or equal food mix to find the mechanics of micromolecules. Uh, and in the second part, I will give you the application of equal food mix in protein analysis. The first one is Helmicerium albio. This is a very important, uh, uh, very important protein. And uh, the second one is uh, the peanut allergen ARH, ARH1. Mm. Also, let's go to the first one. HSA is the most abandoned plasma protein in plasma. It could be used to treat several diseases, including shock, burns, surgical blood loss, uh, acute liver fear, uh, chronic liver diseases, and so on. So how could we get this molecule? And this simple feature shows the uh, production process. First, we should get the plasma from the donors, and ethanol was added to separate the different kinds of proteins. And finally, we will get the HSA solution. Uh, protein in equals is not very stable, so we have to change the equals forms to the powder forms. So freezing drying was used during this process. And uh, during freezing drying, uh, usually we have to add some protective ad additives in order to protect the structure of the HSA. So in our previous study, we found that lower concentration of ethanol have the effect of protect the nature structure of HSA. Therefore, during the whole process, uh, two very important uh, solvents were used. One is ethanol, the other one is water. So in the following research, we focus on these two solvents. Okay, the first one is that in our previous research, we found that water could cover some information about the HSA. So what we think is that if we could construct a Vomax in the deuteration system. That's so we prepared three different solutions, HSA, water, HSA, heavy water, ethanol, and uh, deuterated ethanol, uh, water and heavy water. And from this figure shows the IR spectra of the six different solutions. From the picture on the left, we could find a very significant change is that the OH band changed from 3,500 3, centimeters to about uh, 2,500 centimeters. And this is caused by the uh, stretching of the OD. Uh, then the stretching of the NH could be identified here. Also, we found a very important reason is the amount band from 1750 to 1300. From this region, we find that there's no absorption for both deuterated ethanol and heavy water. Only the structure of HSA could identify it. Yeah, and uh, from the results, we could conclude that this region could be used to help us understand the uh, structure change during the uh, perturbation, both in temperature perturbation perturbation or concentration perturbation. And then we use temperature as the perturbation factors and we find some, uh, and we get the IR spectra. Uh, from the IR spectra, we could find that as the temperature goes higher, the intensity, this peak mode had a blue shift. And also this reading is only one peak and uh, continue Wavelet transforms was used to help us find more peaks. Yeah. And uh, after, after the pretreatment by CWT, 
we could identify four positive peaks. Uh, the uh, uh, 3119, 30, 3380, and uh, 3518, and uh, 3642 centimeters, which could be attributed from uh, strong hydronic bonded water to free water. Also, similarly, we could find uh, four positive, peak, positive peaks in the heavy water systems, but they have a very uh, but they had a blue a, a red shift, and we could identify four peaks also from 30, 23, 77 to 26, 88, which can also could be attributed to a strong hydronic body of water to free water. So what about the NRL spectrum? Also, we could find that in the water system, there are two wide bands. And in the heavy water system, we could only find one band that is could be attributed to the overtone of the OD band. And the different uh, CWT were also used to pre-treat this region. And we could get two positive peaks, uh, which could be attributed at uh, the 68, 25 centimeters is the hydronic bonded water and uh, 70, 70 is the non hydrogen bound water. Two peaks also could be found in the heavy system, but we could find a very interesting thing is that the ratio between the peaks is different. And the ratio in the heavy water systems is uh, it's almost the one to one, which indicates that in the heavy water system, uh, the hydrogen bonded network is strong which means that we could need more energy to destroy these systems. Then PCA was used for this region, and we could find uh, very interesting that uh, during, uh, this showed the PC2 uh, during the temperature, as the temperature goes higher, we could find the turning point is about 50 degree, uh, five, 50 degree and 55 degree centigrade. And uh, I didn't know, they're not show here. And, and for the water system, the time turning point is 50 degree, which means that we have, we need more energy to destroy the heavy water system. And also using 2D cores, we could find the change order and first the strong hydrogen bound water uh, destroyed, then it's the free water. So uh, after this uh, investigation, we could find uh, four water spaces in the heavy water system, uh, from free water to strong hydrogen bonded water. After we have identified all uh, the warm marks in the heavy water system, then we could use this to investigate the effect of heavy water to the HSA solutions. And still we got the NRL spectra from the reading from 20,000, 12,000 to 4,000 and uh, temperature as the perturbation. Um, we focus first on the reading from 48LO to 42 O centimeters. And the CWT was also used to help us uh, find some specific Peaks. Uh, it is very uh, interesting that we find that the black line is the absorption of heavy water. And uh, in the four negative peaks, there's no absorption for the water, which means that the peaks could be attributed to the HSA structure. Therefore, we could attribute these four peaks to uh, HSA secondary structure especially for the 43, 80, uh, 58 centimeter is a HSA alpha helix and uh, 44, 20 centimeter is HS beta turn. And since we have identified the secondary structure of HSA, uh, what is the change uh, rules? And we plot the intensity change with the temperature goes high we could find that as the temperature goes higher, the turning point of uh, 
alpha helix is about 65 centigrade degrees, which means that when the temperature is higher than 60, the second structure destroyed by the uh, of the HSA. Also, we could find that the change of the base turn, it could be from 65, also is a turning point for the HSA's second structure. From this, we could know that 65 degrees centigrade is a turning point, and the HSA is the uh, in the in the research about the heavy water system, we found that the turning point is fifty five degrees centigrade, and the, this system, the turning point is sixty five degrees centigrade, which means that HSA could make the hydrogen bond network more stable. So further, we use PCA to confirm our results. And from the PC1 loading, we also could have found the change from strong hydrogen bottom water to non hydrogen bottom water. And the score 2 indicated that as the temperature goes higher, there is a platform. And the turning point is about 60 degrees centigrade, which the result is in accordance with our previous research. And when the temperature is higher than 60, the structure uh, destroyed. Then, after we have uh, identified the effect of heavy water on HSA solutions, then we could use the IR and AI structure to investigate the effect of a deteriorated acetyl during the uh, to the HSA heavy water system. Uh, also, first, we use IR to investigate the reading. The first reading we investigate is the 17, 50 to 16. This is a amount of one uh, reading, which could reflect the uh, secondary structure of the HSA, such as in the 1652 centimeter is the alpha helix, and the 1615 and the 1695 is the bit sheet of the HSA's structure. Also, in the reading from the OD absorption, we could find four positive peaks, which is in accordance with our heavy water system in the IR reading. And the 2D course would use to find the change order, and we could identify that first the bit sheet changed and then the alpha helix changed. And then the region was uh, of the OD band we used for PCA analysis and we could identify that the concentration of 5% acetyl has a very important effect to the whole system. That means that um, when the concentration of acetyl is about 5%, it may be have more, and it maybe keeps the system more stable, and uh, it will need more energy to destroy the systems. And the uh, 2D course were used to find the change order. Also, we could identify that strong hydrogen border destroyed first, and finally is the free water. So, what about in the NR region? Also, we investigate the reading from 55 centimeters to 65 centimeters, and uh, this region reflects the change of the HIC side chains about the uh, methane, methane stretching. And we could find that as the concentration goes higher, uh, the interaction between the CH3 and the uh, uh, hydrogen bond uh, becomes closer. And also, we could identify 5% concentration as a very important impact to the whole systems. And then we look at this region. And from this region, we could identify two water spaces. The first one is the red line is the PCA of the ethanol. And the red, one, red line is the PCA result of the HIC ethanol solution. And from this, we could find that 
after the addition of ethanol, the strong hydrogen bonded water increased and the change tried say changed also about four percent uh ethanol concentration uh could have a very important effect in impact to the whole systems maybe four percent concentration has the protect most uh, has the best uh, protect effect and uh PCA was used to analyze the reading from 54 centimeters to 60, 46 centimeters. Also, use these methods, we calculate the ratio for the hydrogen bonded water to the non hydrogen bonded water. And we could find that after the addition of lower concentration of ethanol, the ratio for hydrogen bond water to non hydrogen water increased. And uh, when the concentration is 3%, the ratio is the highest. And uh, it indicates that this should provide more energy to destroy these systems. So, in order to validate our hypothesis, we use uh, CD and TM to validate our hypothesis. And uh, the result on the left showed the CD uh, spectra. From the spectra, we could find that the addition of ethanol could, uh, help, could uh, keep the natural structure of HSA and uh, the alpha helix content increased. Also, the TEM results uh, showed that when A is the HS natural structure and B uh, showed the structure without uh, any ethanol, without adding any ethanol. And uh, it could be found that amyloid fiber were formed and uh, the structure changed. Uh, when we add different concentration of ethanol, the structure of the HSA became more closer to the natural HSA st uh, structure. That means that the addition of a lower concentration ethanol could help to protect the natural, spe natural structure of HSA. Okay, to summarize our research, we could conclude that the ethanol could play a role as a structure maker to protect the HSA's natural structure. Okay, the second example is that we use equal photonics to investigate the uh, to visualize the ARH1 protein. As we all know, peanut allergen is a, a very common uh, phenomenon in our world. About three in one hundred children will be allergic to the peanuts. So, uh, pre-treatment to the peanuts is very important. Usually, heating is used to eliminate the Allergen, allergen. So, uh, but the detailed mechanics is not clear. And in this research, we prepared the uh, solution of ARH, ARAH1, and the uh, temperature was used as the perturbation. And uh, this figure shows the raw spectra of the NIR of the ARH1 uh, spectra. We use this region, the overture, for our further analysis. And uh, PC was the first used, and we could find that as the time there is a turning point at uh, 55 degrees centigrade, which means that when the temperature goes higher than 55 degrees centigrade, the structure of the peanuts will be destroyed. And the region at uh, this wavelength could tell us in more details. As the temperature goes higher, the alpha helix structure and the beta fold structure increase, which means that the secondary, the secondary the structure of the peanuts is has been destroyed. That means that the peanut had no allergen reaction to the children. So we can use, we can enjoy the peanuts. So this is an example that we use 
they call photomix to vi visualize the heating process. And we identify the 12 water spaces and uh, we construct the echogram. Uh, this figure shows more clearly that as the temperature goes higher, the hydrogen bonded water network uh, moved from the strong hydrogen bonded water to weak hydrogen bonded water, which means that the structure of the peanuts had been destroyed. Okay, uh, in the second, uh, next slide, we'll uh, give you the uh, ecophotomic application of carbohydrate analysis. Uh, also, two kinds of two examples. The first one is hyaluronic acid. And uh, as we all know, hyaluronic acid uh, is commonly used in cosmetic areas because it has the ability of absorption of water. Uh, one molecule of HA could uh, absorbed about 2,000 water molecules, so it had been widely used in the cosmetic areas. Um, but how does HA affect the function of water? There's no report, and we uh, demonstrate this function in two aspects. The first one is concentration, and the second one is molecular weight. And this figure shows the NI spectra of HA solution uh, from the plots in uh, on the right uh, on the left we could find that uh, the intensity of the HA solution decreased, which means that uh, some wa the water molecule the water amount in the HA solution is lower than the pure water system. And uh, second derivatives were used to uh, separate uh, different water spaces. And in this region, we could find S link, uh, SO, S1, and S2, uh, three water spaces. And the PCA was used to uh, describe uh, the tendency of the, with the concentration. We, find, uh, we could find a turning point at about 40 microgram. And uh, this turning point indicates that there may be a third material which affects the linearity. Uh, uh, and this is the uh, hydrated water. Uh, then we construct the equal four grams uh, as uh, in this figure. And as the concentration goes higher, different water spaces change. Uh, from this the figure on the right, we could find that as the concentration goes higher, the water spaces C1 to C10 decrease and uh, C11 increase before the concentration of 40, which, which means that uh, some as the concentration goes higher, some free water uh, becomes uh, hydrogen bonded water. And uh, we you also use temperature as the perturbation to investigate the equal photo equal gram. And from the figure on the right, we could find that as temperature goes higher, it changed from hydrogen bonded system to weak hydrogen bonded system. And we take out S0, S1, S2 to plot a straight line and uh, the blue one represents the water system and the red line represents the HA solution. From these three figures, we could find that as the temperature goes high, S0 and S1 increased and S2 decreased, which means that hydrogen bonded water were destroyed. Also, we investigate the slope of the three lines, we could identify that the slope of the HSA, HA solution is lower than the water's slope, water's slope, which means that HA solution could have the ability to resist with the temperature. Then we investigate the effect of HA molecular to be uh, molecular weight to the water, we use three different kinds of molecules. 
and we collect the NIR spectra at 30, 7 degrees centigrade. Also, different methods were used to identify the uh, water spices, and finally, we construct the equal gram. Interestingly, we can find that as the molecular weight goes high, the hydrogen network changed from the uh, strong hydrogen bonded water to weak hydrogen bonded network, which means that small molecule bit of HA could uh, uh, may have the effect of uh, bonded more water, and uh, larger molecular weight may have the weaker ability to bond water. And this could be used to help us um, prepare some um, cosmetic uh, formulations. To summarize uh, this part, uh, we could find that HA could form a large number of hydrogen bonds, both enter and enter the HA molecule. Also, it could have the effect of improving the thermal ability stability. And uh, the results may provide a basis for the development of uh, related cosmetic uh, products. And finally, I will give you an uh, example about the stereo side uh, absorption process. As we all know, stereo side is uh, an excipate used in the pharmaceutical. Uh, so the absorption of water ability should be investigated. And uh, in this uh, experiment, we focus on the carbonation band, not on the overtone, because we in could investigate the solid, uh, uh, the powder of the mix. And uh, this region was pre-treated with MSC to eliminate the effects of particle size. Then we could use second derivatives to find some surface water and bonded water. The surface water is in 1911, and the bonded water is 1944. Tulikos was used to help us find the change order, and the surface water was bonded on the material first, and then the uh, bond, uh, bonded water. Uh, after this, we could conclude that uh, surface water was bonded to stereo side first, and then when the surface water uh, are saturated, then bonded water formed on the water. And this could be help us to elucidate the absorption mechanics of the whole process. Okay, the last part is the conclusions. Uh, the ecophotomix is a simple and a convenient method which could realize the visualization of the completed systems. Also, water could be used as a proof to realize a multi-scale evaluation of the micromolecules, both in micro level or in electric le level. It could be used as a bridge to connect the micro and the macro world. Uh, finally, I would like to thank Professor Zhang and uh, uh, the guys in our lab also, I would like to thank Professor Sinkova and Elena to give me the chance to share our work. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Leon. <laughs> Wonderful work. Uh, you did really a lot with this. So we have a <laughs> we have a first comment. Actually, it is a bravo from from Professor Sinkova. So from now on, we can we are open to questions. Anyone in the audience, just please raise a hand if you have any anything to ask or to comment. So before someone gets the courage, <laughs> I would actually like to comment. <laughs> Finally, I have some opportunity. I wanted actually to say that um, I really love. Uh, the the way you are using um, uh, the way you design experiments in all your all your papers, I really like how you use perturbation by by temperature, and I love how you do the analysis. I, I especially like how you always 
um, I mean, okay, temperature is absolutely important for the, the uh, denaturation of proteins, but I love how you always plot the spores as a function of temperature, and I always advise that very often to, to the students and the researchers in our lab that this is a fantastic way to learn when something is happening uh, uh, to pinpoint exact moment or, or the temperature when something is changing in your samples, and then you can uh, learn what uh, what happened with the water uh, to cause that actually to see what is the exact cause and I also like this is something I think that only your group is doing for aquaphotomics and I would love to see more of that the use of um, uh, to the uh, cross correlate uh, to the uh, correlation spectroscopy and I noticed here that uh, you are using different techniques I love the first uh, uh the first part that, that you gave it was from infrared and then you're using combination band in near infrared and you're also using um first overton of water in in near infrared and that is something really a beautiful beautiful amount of data that you can uh basically connect if you use for example to the uh, hetero uh, correlation to see what is, what is happening in these different parts of the spectrum? I think you have a really beautiful chance. And uh, I wanted to say something because when you were talking, I recalculated the band that you were mentioning uh, in the infrared in the first, uh, first part that you were talking. Uh, those bands that you found, uh, for example, 32, 19 centimeters uh, in, um, inverse, uh, you say that's tetrahedral, and that corresponds to the band that we recently uh, found out as a new Vamax to 1553 nanometers in first overturn. And that is exactly one of these ice like structures. I wish I know more about because you, you just say tetrahedral, but I'm not sure whether, whether it is exactly that or not. I think there is more to it, more precise structure can be determined. Uh, 30, uh, 3380 centimeters to minus one, that is approximately 1479. That's, you say, distorted tetrahedral stru structure. That is something that in first overton, when we recalculate, uh, corresponds to our, we usually say that this uh, trimer, uh, um, three hydrogen bonds, water molecule with three hydrogen bonds, three hydrogen bonds. And especially, I was interested in this band that you observed at 3518, which you say is uh, quasi-free water. When I recalculated that to the first overton, uh, that would uh, correspond to the band at 1421, which we know, 21 nanometers, which we know is really immensely important for uh, protein hydration and for the, prote for the proper folding. So my co comment was now <laughs> a little bit, you know, like... Uh, broad but i would like to ask you if you can tell me if you wh whatever you know about for example this uh the structures uh what is this quasi free you call it just quasi free do you know can you tell me more about what is the exact structure or about this 3219 what exactly is i mean tetrahedral is it really tetrahedral or you have more to say if you have anything I would be very very appreciative <laughs> because it's puzzling for me and this is the work that I'm doing lately I want to know exactly how it looks like on a molecular level and to pinpoint all these bands yes it is very difficult to find some specific specific explanation and during the heavy water system uh, because I, we, uh -huh. we, we have uh, found a lot of reference and uh, it is hard and, and uh, uh, there's a few reports about the heavy water systems. Um, I think uh, the quality free water uh, species uh, is with moderate strong hydrogen bonded water as we discussed before in our, in our uh, traditional Chinese medicine uh, uh -huh. use. That, in that article, uh, <laughs> uh, yes, uh, you mentioned that it maybe uh, could be attributed to moderate 
strong hydrogen bond in the water. Ah, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think, mm -hmm. mm, it should be. Yeah, I am. Yeah, between, I remember. Uh, mm -hmm. Between the strong, uh, strong hydrogen bond in the water and mm -hmm. the weak hydrogen bond. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I see. What I know, so uh, lately I understood about this type of water um, uh, that absorbs around this um, wavelength. Is uh, it uh, this is the type of water molecules which are involved with uh, hydration of amphiphilic um, molecules? Uh, proteins are also, I guess, amphiphilic. They have hydrophobic and uh, hydrophilic part. But I really still cannot uh, understand. Uh, okay, this is definitely moderate. It is between the let's say free and the and the strong hydrogen bond. So the ice ice structure and uh, the uh, the weak uh, or maybe the S zero and th this is uh, uh -huh. in between. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. yes, yes. The energy is uh, just just in between. Yes, yes. I agree. But I would so like to know more. And I'm very happy that you have, you know, like so many techniques. Uh, and I was also doing uh, recalculations with, uh, from your combination band, from the experiments that you did, uh, you performed the combination band. And I so like seeing the same band that we constantly see in our, in, in our experiments, which is uh, really contributing to our knowledge. Thank you. So this is good. I'm happy. Uh, I also uh, admire you very much. Uh -huh. Professor Tenko will have a lecture. I also admire you very much, as I said once, I mean, I said once um, when I just started talking here, but um, uh, the way you design experiments uh, also using heavy water, I really would like that I can do experiments with heavy water. This brings so much uh, more information about uh, the types of yeah, yes, when, when, we use, when we use heavy water and uh, we could find some uh, information about the protein. That mm -hmm. could, that could help us understand the role of water in more details. That that's yes. what that that's what I think. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. So, Professor Tenko, sorry for waiting. I didn't notice a raised hand. Please. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, Go ahead. Thank you, Elena. Um, I have a few questions and, and um, of course suggestions. Um, I saw that. Uh, this is wonderful that you use aquaphotonics for infrared radiation. Yeah. And I would like to see aquagram for infrared region, which means that maybe your group could be the first group to identify the WOMAX in infrared. Have you thought about this? And but mm -hmm. we only find the four peaks. <laughs> that yes, it's be... fine, but that's fine. But this is the big difference between infrared and infrared. You see? In infrared, we have, uh, and I will tell you why you find only only four. Mm -hmm. um, I think you can, you can do a little bit more uh, applying a PCA. When you do PCA, then, then you see the variations at not only second derivative. Second derivative, of course, will give you only four. Mm -hmm. But if you do PCA analysis, then you will see loadings and those loadings will show you the bands with, with higher variations. And then you will increase the WOMAX. You will see real WOMAX there. Okay, thank you. And that, that will help um, because recalculating your WOMAX in infrared range will show consistency with WOMAX in infrared range. And then you see what exactly we uh, you can see in infrared and how much more you can see in infrared. It is also something very yeah. fascinating for science. Yeah, yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we do regression vectors, something that you can do also, POS in infrared, and, and look at the regression vector and pick up some bands from, from uh, regression vectors. You can subtract spectrums and, and also see. I mean, the same... Um, procedure that we do in infrared, you can do in infrared and, and just increase the number of the um, WOMAX in infrared um, and help understanding what exactly and why we have so many bands. And when we go to the lower um, um, or to the higher overtones, like second and third, we have even more and more. And especially for combination bands, we want to know 
Now we are struggling to, to, to understand the, <clears throat> the combination bands assignment. But if you could find a, some bands that relate to those bands in infrared, then we will understand much more. And then the con your contribution is really, really, very, very important now. Um, another thing that I saw a beautiful application of, uh, of uh, two-dimensional, but the beauty of two-dimensional is showing dynamics, showing especially the asynchronous um, when you go and interpret the, the results of asynchronous spectra, you could say what's happening in the dynamics of water uh, along the perturbation. So which is the water structure that breaks first? And which are the wa mm. water structures that are um, next? So mm -hmm. water is breaking and making and breaking. It's all, but we could see this along the perturbation using uh, two-dimensional. So, yeah. I mean, you have so, so, as Yelena said, you have beautiful data, but if you continue exploring this data, you can really enrich the, the information that you have and enrich the aquaphotonics um, area and knowledge. Yeah. Yes, we, we, we should take more, take out the data and uh, find more information. Yes, yes, because, um, I mean, spectroscopy goes like this, uh, uh, raw data, second derivative, comparison, um, assignment with what we have until now. But the new stuff comes w when you just dig a little bit deeper in, in the data. And, and really, um, because you have the, the line, the thoughts, the concept of aquaphotonics, mm -hmm. and, and you, you have a uh, previous knowledge already, lots of, and you, uh, that helps you, will help you uh, find lots of cons consistency. And that will um, strengthen your paper in, in your work and will show even more and more. Okay, yeah. thank you. Thank you for your yes. and Good luck, good luck. It's really, really, and the dynamics is, is the beauty. I mean, dynam water dynamics is what we can see. And what we are really looking for, to, to the, the water dynamics is information, so about the system. Uh, but, but the points of your research is so is so valuable. Thank yes. you. Um, may I just uh, um, a comment because I think uh, I mean we have a question, but I just have a comment on what Professor Tank was was saying with infrared because uh, we did uh, in the past some analysis. Where we had the same system, uh, it was like I think um, some salt dissolved in water in different concentration, and we had uh, terahertz spectra, infrared, and near infrared. And I was really excited to have all this data, and I did everything with the multivariate analysis. And I was absolutely, uh, you know, like disappointed because I saw in infrared there are no peaks. <laughs> there are really indeed like two or four peaks in loadings. And this is all that I could see. However, in near infrared, I have much more because I, I mean, uh, near infrared, we have uh, higher influence of these hydrogen bondings on, on, on OH. This is what we see better. So I would always prefer to use near infrared compared to infrared. However, if I look at the infrared, I'm interested in why I'm seeing only this band. <laughs> you know, what is it? You know, uh, the question is actually much deeper. It's not about practicality, which, which um, uh, you know, technique to use in order to get some results. But I'm really interested in what the light of this particular then wavelength does to the sample in order to, you know, like excite it to, 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 uh, to have this information. So this is what, when I did this analysis, I was like, okay, I, there is no need for me to go to terahertz, nor to infrared. I, I really have the most information from near infrared, but it is really valuable if we can join it together in order to just find out why, why this is so. So this is what I wanted to say. Yes, in the following research, we could connect the IR spectra and NIs together. Uh -huh, that is, 
from uh-huh. some Hetero, fundam- fundamental band, overtones, and uh, combination bands. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Hetero, hetero to the national. Hetero. It's so important. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I saw a question from Tomoko-san. Tomoko-san, I'm sorry. I didn't see on time if you would like. Uh... Oh, no. I, I mistouched. Sorry. Are you missed? Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. Oh, then. <laughs> okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, anyone else? Comments? Questions? Pierre, it is very nice to see that you joined. <laughs> I've missed you in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, there are still some some information that I cannot uh, mm-hmm. cannot explain, uh, especially for the reading of the CH CH uh, CH and uh, the CH band. CH band. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Then when, mm-hmm. when you do two dimensional, then um, with two dimensional you'll see uh, beautifully the the relation between OH and CH. Mm-hmm. Um, and exactly what kind, what type of water structures are related to the dynamics of CH. And this is something that, that science um, really needs to have to understand. Yeah. And you have it, you have it in the data, you just need to analyze it. Yeah. Okay, Pierre, thank you for the comments. I was, uh, I really missed you. I love, love having you always for discussions. <laughs> it's fine, uh, I, I understand. Uh, anyone else? Comments, questions? I find your work very exciting. I love uh, working with proteins and I love what you did. Um, I mean, obviously about the pre- preservation of things. You're interested You're uh, interested in how to preserve cells and tissues, right? That is why you're doing this. Is that so, Lian? Yeah, it's a- so I, I, I asked, uh, so, I mean, because, um, because of your work with ethanol on this protein, I, I asked, uh, you're working on actually preservation. You're in exploring Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes. Uh, because during the, uh, the freezing drying process, the, uh, freezing. Stru- mm-hmm. the, the structure of uh, it, it, the protein will be destroyed. So mm-hmm. uh, some, some protective add- add- additives should be added. Mm. So in, in my research, uh, I want to elucidate, elucidate this uh, phenomenon phenomen- using yeah. the, yes, 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 ER of course, the IR. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I am interested in that too. Uh, although, um, I mean, we do not work with, um, let's say, human material or something here a lot, uh, but uh, the, the principle is the same. Uh, we're working, let's say, on preservation of food, and I'm interested in the same phenomena. Why? Uh, certain, you know, like food stuff is preserved, can be preserved using different preservation techniques. For example, we can use salt, we can use sugar, but everything is aimed at uh, actually modifying the water structure, removing the that free part that can, you know, like interact with the environment and so on. So this was, uh, I mean, this is of interest to me because if we understand that process, of course, we can, uh, you know, like extend all this, translate the, the results for preservation of um, medicines, vaccines, tissues, and so on, which is beautiful. Uh, I'm interested. Yeah, yes. I, I have read several papers uh, you mentioned about the preservation of a strawberry. Or, ah! Yeah, that was upset. Mm-hmm. But uh, in the pharmaceutical areas, uh, the the materials are more sensitive to temperature. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. Mm, yes, 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 of it course. Is, it, it is very, it, it is very, mm, it is necessary to investigate, investigate the mechanics, mechanics or the interaction between, <laughs> between yes. the and the award and water. Yeah, and the incredibly important, if uh, especially, absolutely, your job is much more difficult. Uh, all these proteins, they, you know, you take them out, and they have to actually bo- be working at the very in the very narrow temperature range in the human body. That mm-hmm. for me is so impressive that you know the our organism must be regulated within such a small 
temperature interval in order to, for things to function. And we know the temperature changes water uh, immensely. So I'm, that, that is one of the fa fascinating things about, uh, of course, very difficult to investigate, but yeah, yeah, fascinating. Yeah, that's in our previous study, we use the temperature in total, in total about the five degrees centigrade. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, Professor Sikova uh, gave us a suggestion that why we use the interval smaller, uh, maybe two centigrade. Uh, Absolutely. To, to find more useful information. Mm -hmm. So in this uh, in this experiment, uh, we use the, the interval of two, uh, mm -hmm. maybe. And uh, we could find more information. Mm -hmm. Ah, now when you're talking about it, I wanted to mention there is one paper I will share with you. That paper I I don't know it now uh, exactly. I don't know the link, but I recently read one beautiful paper where uh, they used irradiation by light on water, and the irradiation was performed by uh, a light of a certain wavelength, and that wavelength was this around 1425 nanometers. And what they uh, achieved with influencing the water, they influenced the um, folding of protein. That was really interesting. Uh, so I think it, um, I will share with, uh, with you that paper, some woman from Poland, I think Magdalena is, is her name. I was really impressed because if, you, if, we, if we find out, you know, which, which of these uh, frequencies uh, at which water absorbs, if we can influence them by light of that particular frequency and we basically achieve resonance, you can, uh, you know, like fold the protein <laughs> by light. <laughs> yeah, well, 1425 is what, what protein hydration, right? Mm -hmm. So this, this light basically created a template in the water for protein to just fold in for the amino acids actually to yeah, the resonance increase the energy and um, and prob probably speed up speed up the hydration right I didn't ask, do you uh, do you uh, actually use consecutive irradiation in, in your uh, in your experiments yeah, yes it, it's similar <laughs> to second derivative we use a uh, continue wavelength transformation CWT uh, ah, no, I'm sorry, my, my question is different. Regarding when you do, uh, when, when you're scanning the samples, when you're taking the spectra, do you mm -hmm. scan it a few times, one after another, or how many times do you scan? Uh, about uh, uh, 34. 34? Uh, wow. the, scan, the scan number? No, this is the, the scan number that you... Um, arrange the, the spectrophotometer. I think she's people. asking. Uh -huh. She's asking about the consecutive spectra. So this is usually this is what we use in uh, in, uh, in aquaphotonics, because when you take spectra of the same sample, few consecutive times, the, the sample itself changes because of the light absorbed in the previous measurement, mm -hmm. and and light becomes your perturbation. So you can see the change of the sample with measurements. It is already quantum. Um, no, okay, uh, I, maybe I, I understand. <laughs> the, this one I just wanted to, to um, ask if you do that, because that is also perturbation like you're using with the temperature and um, other types, concentration, of course. So just, I was curious. Okay. Uh, Anyone else questions or comments? Or we are going to end finally one webinar on time. <laughs> yeah, I, I usually talk too much. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Liam mm -hmm. to come to our lab and uh, spend some time with us. Or okay. actually, I would love to visit your lab. He was he mentioned at the beginning when we were chatting during the preparation that he would like um, you and me to go there. And I would like to visit China. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I think it would be really nice if we could collaborate uh, more more tightly together to exchange. I would like to learn the, the tools that you use and to have some more experience with experimental designs that you actually do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
So, okay then, audience, once again, Thank you, Leah. anyone, questions? Everyone shy. Okay. Well, then everything was clear from your talk, talk Leon. <laughs> or they are just shy. Uh, anyway, if you, uh, if you want, you can always watch again. The recording of this, of this uh, talk will be available on YouTube in a few days and you will all get a um, notification email uh, with the link uh, that you can use to access the, the video. And if you have uh, at that time uh, some comments, you can always uh, put it on YouTube um, on, on, uh, in, in the comment section. And Liam, you can actually uh, go and uh, occasionally check those comments and if you want, you can answer if, if, if there are uh, some. Uh, so uh, with this, I would like to thank you again, Liam. It was really wonderful hearing you. you talk. And this, uh, I would also like to encourage people to, uh, to go to these papers. I really like, and I very much appreciate whenever you have a paper, I put it in my <laughs> archive of the papers. <laughs> uh, and I usually have different folders for the people that I follow closely. So I have a folder with Lian Lee Lee and all your papers <laughs> go there. <laughs> so uh, these are good papers and I, I encourage an, a, everyone here now to just uh, follow also. Uh, very useful for atomics. I shared uh, one DOI number with the review that I really liked that I read recently by you. So thank you for being with us today and giving us this lecture. Uh, I hope we will see each other soon again. We will actually. Yes, in, 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 in August. Austria. Yes, <laughs> August. Thank you everyone for attending and uh, see you. Uh, I'm not sure when next time, <laughs> maybe in July, but maybe after July in September. We will make a small break in August, something like that. Uh, in, yes. In <laughs> any case, you will be uh, notified uh, as soon as we decide on the next webinar. I'm sorry that I do not have precise information today. Well, then, thank you very much. Mina uh, sama, arigato gozaimasu. Thank you. See you, see you next time. Thank you. Mata. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Lian. Uh, say hi to everyone in your lab, please. To Professor Zhang, please pass our regards. Okay. Many, many warm regards to all of you. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you once again. Bye, Yunusato. <laughs> nice Yuno to see Sato. you as always. Kyoshitsu. <laughs> Yunusato no Kyoshitsu. Bye-bye. Goodbye, Stefan Stanasova. Bye, Muna. Oh, Muna, I'm sorry. I will answer your email soon. <laughs>